The Android open source project shortly called AOSP. When Google finishes up working on a new version of Android, they make the source code available at Git as a part of AOSP. The developers can use this root branch or purest form of Android and can start making custom versions of Android. The result of this build is called Custom ROM. All the custom ROMs like the Pixel Experience, the Lineage OS, the Arrow OS, etc. are made up using this AOSP root branch. But there is one specific ROM which is called AOSP. SP extended, so which takes the Android open source project to the next level. So this is AOSP extended ROM running on Poco F1 and how this ROM is the best ROM ever for Android power users. So I have installed the latest version of AOSP extended and surprisingly it's quite stable than any other ROM currently available for Poco F1. So this is a complete review of AOSP extended running on Poco F1. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to talk about the features, the performance, the battery life, and the frequently asked questions. So watch the video till to the end without missing any part of the video. So let's start first with the features of this build. The default launcher that you would get after installing this ROM is called a quick step, which actually looks like the Pixel launcher. The launcher provides a lot of options by default that you can use it. For example, if I double tap on the empty space of the home screen, you will see that flashlight has turned on. Again, double tapping it will turn off the same. So let's quickly jump onto the settings here. I will choose a gestures option. So inside you will definitely like these two features. The one of which is called a clear all from recent view. When you enable this option, you can simply close all of the applications running in the background with one swipe. Just simply a swipe down to dismiss all of the recent applications. Normally in Android Pie, you need to scroll all the way to the back to see the clear all button and achieve the same. Also, there is another option called a double tap gesture, so which I just showed you. You can choose a uh, sleep option here by simply replacing the flashlight option. Now let's talk about the quick tiles. Did you notice any difference? The ROM provides you the option that you can change the shape of quick tiles very easily. So just head over to settings, display, advanced and choose a quick style style from here. There are few styles are available that you can simply apply it. So let's try this one. It actually looks great, right? So moving up to the UI style. You know, in Android Pie, Google has provided the option to choose UI style which lets you toggle between light and dark theme. But in this build, you simply see as some ready-made UI themes are available for you to use instantly. You can apply any theme from here very easily. For now, I will leave it as a default. You can also choose the accent color of the theme or tint color which is a bonus option. Moving up to the top notch features of this ROM, the always on display. As you can see when I turn off the screen light, instantly the always on display start working. It shows the time, the date, the battery percentage along with the notification badges. To enable it, head over to settings, display, ambient display and make sure always on option is enabled. Let's talk about the extensions. The features of this ROM are insane, so definitely Android Power users will love it. So let's start with the A status bar. From here, you can enable the traffic monitor option, which shows the speed of internet on the top of the status bar. You can also customize the look of the battery you fancy. So moving up to the notifications. Have you ever bothered with headset notifications? Well, this ROM provides an option to simply turn off the headset notifications. You can also set the time period of headset notifications. That's pretty cool. You can also block headset notifications for app bases by using this option from here. This ROM lets you take a full control over notifications. Moving up to the navigation bar. You can enable or disable the navigation bar by simply toggling it on. Remember to use this option if you are using any third body gestures. There is an option called a navigation mode which lets you choose the style of the navigation bar. I personally like the option called a fling. When you enable it, you will see it simply replaces the stock navigation bar with one circle. The cool things about this fling mode is that you can use the gestures to trigger actions. You can customize it by going it into the fling settings. For example, swiping all the way to right will take you one step back and swiping all the way to the left will launch the recent shortcuts. Isn't it cool? Inside this, there is another feature called Pulse. 
when you turn on this option and it enables audio graphic equalizer and pop up at the bottom whenever you're playing a music. This is really fascinating. You can impress your friends with this bonus feature. Next up, which I like the most is called suspend actions. So under the extensions, system, the general tweaks, and suspend actions. So this option lets you tell the kernel what things to do when the screen turns off or on. For example, let's say I want to turn off the mobile data when the screen turns off. I simply choose a disable mobile data option. And remember, choose this option only if there are no downloads running in the background. You can also block the GPS, but don't worry, as soon as the screen turns on, it will re-enable all of these options. Moving up to the lock screen features. Inside the lock screen UI, all of the options available here are quite startling. You can choose this Face Auto Unlock option, which lets you unlock the phone instantly as soon as the IR cameras detect your face ID. There is another option called a fingerprint unlock. When you enable this option, you don't need to enter the password of the phone every time it restarts. You can also use an option called a lock screen charging which shows a lot of information about the battery while it's charging. For example, how many milliamps of current that it's carrying in an hour. There is another feature called a lock screen tuner which helps to tune the lock screen shortcuts. So overall, I can say this ROM is built for Android power users. Every single tweak available in this build are astonishing. Next up, the performance. The performance is simply amazing. I didn't face any issues with this ROM so far and everything is snappier, the transitions, the animations are so smooth. All of your applications, the games will open up faster and I try to play heavy games like the Fortnite play, the Asphalt Land Legends, the PUBG, and it plays without any hiccups and thanks to the beauty of SOC 845. Overall, I can say the performance is impressive and the RAM management is top notch. Finally, let's talk about the battery life, the core component of the smartphone. So far, I have tested a lot of ROMs in Poco of One, and this ROM has surprised me a lot and it's quite stable, which means the battery life you will get on daily basis is close to MIUI 10 as per my testing. While testing this ROM, the amount of amperes which are consumed on my daily usage is on per hour basis. I usually use a 500 milliamps for every single hour. That means I get a 6 plus hours of battery life on completion of one single charge cycle. But if you're not a power user, you will easily get amazing battery life which almost lasts for one day. Finally, answering the frequently asked questions. So these were the FAQs list that you should know before installing this ROM. That's pretty much it guys. I hope you like this video. So if you do, uh, appreciate it by liking this video and also subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. This has been your host KSK. Peace.